Today's lesson is called Beloved Martial Arts Novelist Jin Yong Dies at 94. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. Greetings everyone, I'm Roger, and today we're going to be talking about a famous writer who died recently. Y'all probably know about this. The beloved martial arts novelist Jin Yong died a couple of months ago at the age of 94, back in October. And uh, that's a pretty long time to live, isn't it? 94 years. Yeah, 94 years old or when people get really old, sometimes they say 94 years young, okay? They want to have a good time with their advancing years, so they do all sorts of silly stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not that old. I'm 94 years young, even though when you're 94, you are extremely old. Yes, he died here at the age of 94, so Jin Yong he had a good run. He lived for 94 years, and he made quite the contribution to humanity. He was definitely a beloved novelist, a beloved martial arts novelist. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading our news report lesson on Jin Yong. Beloved martial arts novelist Jin Yong dies at 94. Fans of Chinese martial arts fiction mourned Jin Yong following his passing on October 30th, 2018, at age 94. The popular writer, whose real name was Louis Cha, died in Hong Kong after being ill for many years. Born in China, Cha moved from the mainland to Hong Kong in 1948. He went on to become one of the greats of the wuxia genre. He gained lifelong fans in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other Chinese-speaking communities around the world. 大家好,第一部分我们看到一个单字, beloved. 这个字是形容词指深受喜爱的或钟爱的。例如, fans were upset when the beloved character in the TV series got killed off in a recent episode. 电视影集中那位备受喜爱的角色, 在最近一集中突然被杀死了,让影迷觉得好难过。又或者说, Tom's beloved father tragically died in a car accident. Tom亲爱的父亲在一场车祸中不幸丧生了。再来我们看到动词 mourn,有哀悼,哀痛,某人去世之意。像是 Greg stood silently at their grandmother's funeral, mourning their loss. Greg在祖母的葬礼中,静默无语地站着,哀悼着失去的祖母。另外补充与 mourn 相关的片语, 我们可以用 in mourning for 来表示为点点点扶桑,哀悼。所以可以说, the country is in mourning for the national team who died in the accident. 全国正在为意外中罹难的国家代表队哀悼。接下来我们看到一个单字, mainland, 是名词指, 与周围岛屿相对的本土或大陆。举例来说, tomorrow morning you should be able to catch the boat back to mainland. 明天早上你应该就能搭上回大陆的船了。接着我们看到名词 genre 有文学艺术等的类型题材的意思。像是, certain book genres like romance and horror are not very interesting to me. 我对某几个书籍的类型像是浪漫及恐怖题材都不怎么感兴趣。Okay, everybody, it's time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. Let's take a look first at the title here, Beloved Martial Arts Novelist. Beloved means dearly loved. Martial arts refers to those special kinds of skills or fighting skills that people learn, mainly in the Far East, in China or Korea or Japan. We've got, what, Kung Fu, Judo. Uh, we've got uh, Wing Chun, Tai Chi. Those are all different kinds of martial arts. And uh, this guy wrote stories about those things, although I'm not sure if martial arts is a good translation of the term wuxia in Chinese, but uh, that's the best we can do in English. There you go, martial arts, kind of like karate and stuff like that. Anyways, this guy Jin Yong, apparently he wrote novels about martial arts. By the way, when we're talking about a novel, we're talking about 
a long piece of fiction, okay? Usually novels are quite long. They might be hundreds of pages long. Sometimes people write short novels. They call short novels novellas. Anyways, yes, he wrote novels, long books about martial arts. That's what Jin Yong did. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with our article. The first line says, fans of Chinese martial arts fiction mourned Jin Yong following his passing on October 30th, 2018 at age 94. Yes, these people mourned his passing. When you talk about someone's passing in this case, you're talking about someone's dying. Yes, if someone passes away, they die, they kick the bucket. And here these people are mourning or they're grieving his death, his passing. And apparently he died on October 30th, 2018 at the ripe old age of 94. He didn't miss out on much. He lived a full life of 94 years. Hopefully I'm so lucky. Hopefully I get to live that long myself. Indeed. So these people are mourning his passing. I could say that, uh, hey, Jill hasn't come to work today because she's mourning the death of her uncle. But in any case here, people are mourning his passing. And in the next sentence, it says the popular writer whose real name was Louis Cha died in Hong Kong after being ill for many years. We could say that he was sick for many years. He had a long illness and he finally succumbed to that illness at the age of 94. He died in October in Hong Kong. I guess he was a longtime resident of Hong Kong. There you go. He died after being ill for many years. And sadly, this is the case for very old people. When they get really old, like when they reach their 90s or even their hundreds, they're kind of sick all the time, okay? This person might not have been ill with cancer this whole time or something like that, but they just weren't in good health. The same thing happened with my great-grandfather. He was really strong, and he could do anything until he reached the age of 90, and then he was kind of sick all the time. He didn't have the flu all the time or the cold all the time. He didn't die of cancer or anything like that. But yes, he was generally in poor health and frail and weak for the last 10 years of his life. And yes, he did make it to the ripe old age of 101. But those last 10 years or so, they weren't fun. He was kind of ill for many years. But that's enough for my family. Let's talk some more about Jin Yong. Born in China, Cha moved from the mainland to Hong Kong in 1948. So he moved from the mainland, which of course is Dalu, according to people here in Taiwan, the mainland, mainland China. So he moved from there to Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong at the time was a colony of England. And so he went to live there way back in 1948. He went on to become one of the greats of the wuxia genre. So I mentioned that word earlier in the lesson, wuxia. That, of course, is a word you're all familiar with. And as I said earlier, that uh, is kind of hard to translate. There are different suggestions for how to translate that in the dictionary. Most people probably just say, Kung Fu novels or martial arts novels, rather. So uh, more technically, though, this is the wuxia genre, which is a kind of novel. There are different genres like romance, adventure, fiction, nonfiction, science fiction. Those are different genres of novels. There you go. Genres of novels or types of novels. And you can use this word to describe other types of art as well. Like there are many film genres, let's say. There could be science science fiction movies, suspense movies, so on and so forth. These would be different genres of movies or genres of films. And yes, the word is genre. Pronounce it that way. It's French. It's not genre or anything like that. Anyways, moving on. The next sentence says, He, Louis Cha or Jin Yong, he gained lifelong fans in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other Chinese-speaking communities around the world. Anyways, before we move on here, we've got a vocabulary word that we need to talk about here. The word community. Apparently, this guy, Jin Yong, gained lifelong fans in Chinese-speaking communities the world 
over. Yes, here the word community refers to a place where a group of people live. A community is a group of similar people who live together in some area. And there are Chinese-speaking communities all over the world. Yes, of course, there are Chinese-speaking communities on the mainland there, in Taiwan, here in Hong Kong, so on and so forth. But there are small enclaves of Chinese-speaking people. These Chinese-speaking communities in the United States and in Europe as well. In fact, most large cities in the United States will have a place called Chinatown. That would be a place where Chinese-speaking people. People live. Those would be Chinese-speaking communities. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Cha began writing novels in 1955 while working as a film critic and editor for the New Evening Post. In total, he wrote 15 works of fiction during his career. With the renowned Condor trilogy and Demigods and Semidevils among them. Reports say more than 300 million copies of his books, which have been translated into several languages, have been sold globally. His stories have also inspired film adaptations, TV shows, comics, and video games. The second part, we see the word "renowned." This word is a descriptive word meaning famous. For example, the renowned conductor will be leading tonight's symphony performance. 那位知名的指挥家将会带领今晚的交响乐演出。另外，补充与 renowned 相关的片语，可以用 A be renowned for B 来指 A 在 B 中是著名的。所以，我们可以说 Paula was renowned for her beautiful voice and fantastic performances. Paula 以其美妙嗓音与绝佳演出闻名。再来，我们看到动词 inspire 指激发、启发或赋予点点点灵感，像是。The story of the man who started his own charity inspired Owen to do more to help others. 那位男子自办慈善事业的故事启发了 Owen 多多帮助他人。这边补充与 inspire 相关的片语，常常使用 be inspired by 来表示被点点点激发灵感。举例来说 ，Leonard was inspired by his uncle's example and decided to enter politics. Leonard 受他叔叔的榜样启发而决定从政。另外，补充 inspire 的名词 inspiration, I N S P I R A T I O N, inspiration. 所以可以说 Shelley got a lot of inspiration from the speech that her idol gave last night. Shelley 从她偶像昨晚的演讲中得到很多启发。Okay, in the next part of our lesson, we're talking about the life and times of Jin Young, or Louis Cha.、Uh, that's his English name, but、uh, his pen name is Jin Young. And Cha, or Jin Young, began writing novels in 1955 while working as a film critic and editor. For the New Evening Post, so he had already lived in Hong Kong for seven years when he decided to start writing novels. He was writing for a newspaper there. He was a film critic and an editor for a newspaper called the New Evening Post. So, of course, if you're a critic, that means you write articles in a newspaper usually. Uh, you might have a TV show as well, but you、uh, write articles about different kinds of productions: a movie, a book, a record album, anything like that. So he was reviewing movies. He would describe the movie and tell us whether it was a good movie or a bad movie. And by reading his articles, you could decide whether you would like to see a particular picture or not. Yeah, critics are people who judge works of art and stuff like that. For a living, okay. You can be a film critic. You can be a critic of novels. You can even be a critic of restaurants. You might say, "Hey, this is a good restaurant. You should go there. This place is not so good. You shouldn't go there." And like Roger said before, critics usually write for newspapers. Yeah, they share their opinions on art and other things in writing that can usually be found in newspapers or magazines or on the internet. For instance, the late Roger Ebert was a Celebrated film critic. 
Anyways, moving on, in total, he wrote 15 works of fiction during his career, among them the renowned Condor Trilogy and Demigods and Semi-Devils. And so they were quite numerous, and some of the more famous ones include the Condor Trilogy and Demigods and Semi-Devils. Of course, we're describing these novels, or these series of novels, as renowned, which means they are famous people. People know all about them. If you mention them to somebody from Hong Kong or Taiwan or China, they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. There you go, and it says here that this is a trilogy. Okay, a trilogy is a piece of art, let's say, that's told in three parts. I believe that Toy Story, this franchise of movies, used to be a trilogy. There was Toy Story One. Toy Story 2, and then Toy Story 3, but I believe they're going to make another movie. So this is no longer a trilogy. It's not a story or something like that told in three parts, one coming after the other. Anyways, moving on. Reports say that more than 300 million copies of his books, which have been translated into several languages, have been sold. Globally, so here we've got this verb translate to talk about right now. Get this: three hundred million, three hundred million copies of his books have been translated into many, many languages. How cool! How awesome! But like I said before, what does the verb translate mean? Well, if you translate something, you change something from one language. To another, yes. To translate is to use a language to express a thought or an idea or something like that that was originally expressed in another language. So Lewis just started writing in one language, and then later on, his books were translated into other languages so that people around the world could read them in their native languages. They were so good in Chinese that other people wanted to read them as well. So they've been translated into Japanese. Into English, into Spanish, Hungarian—you name it. It's probably been translated into those languages because they are so good, and so many people want to read them. And of course, they've been sold globally or all over the world. His stories have also inspired film adaptations, TV shows, comics, and video games. Here we've got the verb to inspire, which means you get an idea to do something because you thought something was so great. Boy, I'm inspired after my trip to Europe to become. I'm a painter. I went to all these museums and saw those paintings by the masters. And boy, am I inspired! I want to be a painter. And of course, adaptations are just a version of those novels. A TV show is a version of the novel. Comics refers to comic books, etc., etc., as well as lots of video games. And I'm sure they're coming out with new titles all the time. That brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's move on to the third and final part. We'll listen first. Set in fantasy worlds where heroes protect the weak and defenseless, Cha's novels have often been compared to those of the English writer J.R.R. Tolkien, author of *The Lord of the Rings*. Like Tolkien, Jin Yong will live on through his novels, though fans mourn his death. 最后第三部分，我们看到一个片语 "live on"， 在课文中代表继续存在、流传下去。举例来说。Although the author died hundreds of years ago, he lives on through his writing. 虽然那位作家数百年前就过世了，透过其作品，他仍屹立不朽。而 live on 除了延续下去的意思之外，还可以表示依靠点点点生活或以点点点为食。受词通常是食物或是金钱。所以我们可以说 ，Lost at sea for weeks, the desperate sailor lived on raw fish and rain water. 在海中迷航数周的无助水手，依靠生鱼和雨水为生。All right, folks. We're back, and we're about to wrap up our article on Jin Yong. Set in fantasy worlds where heroes protect the weak and defenseless, Cha's novels have often been compared to those of the English writer J.R.R. Tolkien. 
author of The Lord of the Rings. So there you go. J.R.R. Tolkien is a very famous writer, and apparently people have compared his works to the works of Louis Cha or Jin Yong. And if you guys don't know who J.R.R. Tolkien is, remember, J.R.R. Tolkien is behind The Lord of the Rings. He's responsible for that. He wrote that. He did, and of course, that's a trilogy as well.、Uh, there are three books in that, and of course, they were made into films by the director Peter Jackson. You may have seen them before, but in any case, yes, I guess they're comparing、uh, Jin Yong's novels with J.R.R. Tolkien's novels. Although I think they're similar in some ways, but quite different in other ways. You can discuss that amongst yourselves, but I suppose that's a way for Westerners to kind of understand these novels. Jin Young, I've never heard of him. Well,、uh, his novels are kind of like the Lord of the Rings. You could tell that to foreigners if you're trying to tell them about Jin Young's wuxia xiaoshuo. Now, here in the final sentence, it says, "Like Tolkien, Jin Young will live on through his novels, though fans mourn his death." So it's true that the fans are sad about him passing. He's going to live on through his novels.、Uh, you can continue to read them, even though he's dead and gone. Maybe you've read them before, but hey, you can always read them again. You might see something different that you didn't see before. There you go. Jin Young will live on. His memory won't die out. It won't be extinguished. Fantastic. Yes. Anyways, we've got this phrase to live on. If something lives on, it lasts. Okay. It is remembered long, long after. We probably should have forgotten it, though. Hey. We shouldn't forget Jin Young and his novels. They're super fantastic and great. And I, for one, am happy that he and his memory will indeed live on. All right, folks. With that, today's lesson is in the books, and it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Xin Hanli. We're going to look at today's lesson. The lesson in the third section of the book is the fact that set in fantasy worlds where heroes protect the weak and defenseless. Cha's novels have often been compared to those of the English writer J.R.R. Tolkien, author of The Lord of the Rings. Jin Yong's 小说设定在英雄会保护弱者与手无寸铁者的奇幻世界，常常被拿来和英国作家 J.R.R. t o l k i n 也就是魔界作者的作品来相提并论。那这个句子我们有几个重点要注意哦。首先，动词 set 可以用来表达电影故事的这个场景。设定，像假设 the novel is set in 1940， 就表示这本小说它的故事场景是设定在一九四零年。那我们课文的句子前半句它其实是分词构句，才会用分词 set 来开头。它原本可以写成 Charles novels are set in fantasy worlds where heroes protect the weak and defenseless。And Charles' novels 怎么样？怎么样？那我们就发现，哎，前后的子句是一样的。那他就是把连接词 and 省略，再把前半句的主词 Charles' novels 省略。动词的部分，因为 are set， 它是被动语态，它只要保留过去分词 set， 就会形成分词构句了。好，另外课文句子里面的 the weak and defenseless 指的是弱者和手无寸铁者。当我们用 the 加上形容词，就表示具有什么样特性的人，或者是某类的人事物。那这部分它必须视为复数哦。举例来说 ，the rich 就表示富人啊，有钱人。The young 就是年轻人 ，the homeless 表示无家可归的人，还有 the unknown 就表示未知的事物。举例来说 ，She devoted herself to helping the poor， 也就是说她奉献自己的一生，致力于帮助贫困的人。The poor 就是贫困的人。接着看到课文后半句啊，它用到 compare 这个动词。那我们这边来学习 compare 的用法。第一种呢，你就是用 compare A to B 来表达，将 A 比作 B， 将 A 比喻为 B。那这个用法是在强调两者之间相似的地方，像是 The journalist compared him to Steve Jobs， 也就是说，那名记者将他比作贾伯斯。好，再看一个例句。He compared life to a marathon. 他把人生比喻为一场马拉松赛跑
。好，那第二种用法是 compare A with B， 或是 compare A to B， 这表示将 A 与 B 来做比较。那这个用法就是把两者放在一起比较，去找出他们的异同。例如 ，Holly's father always compares her with her older sister. Holly 的爸爸总是会拿她跟她姐姐做比较。好，那顺便补充一下，英文有一个用语叫做 compare apples to oranges。然后这个 to 你也可以换成 with， 也有人换成 and。那这个用法呢，就是说拿苹果跟柳丁比。那这两种是完全不同的水果啊，没有办法比较。所以呢，这个用法就是说两种不一样的东西是没有办法比较的。好，那第三种用法是 compared。加上 with 或是 to， 加上什么什么，用来表达说跟什么什么相比，或是相较于什么什么。好，要注意哦，这个是一个独立分词片语，那你可以把它摆在句首，或是接在主要子句后面。例如 ，The test was a lot easier compared with the last one。这个测验跟上次比起来简单多了。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Beloved, Tom Hanks is one of the most beloved actors in the United States. Mourn, fans mourned the race car driver after a crash resulted in his death. Mainland, it takes three hours by boat to reach the island from the mainland. Community, we're raising money to help the retired community in our town. Critic. Audiences and film critics don't always agree about whether a movie is worth watching. Translate. In her free time, Mandy translates her favorite short stories into English. Inspire. A love of art inspired Nikki to take up sketching. Comic. The comic Garfield, which has been published in newspapers since 1978, was created by Jim Davis. We sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.